Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Remember, I am the foremost expert in the world on subtle energy physics, otherwise known as consciousness and radionic machines. I've been using every single type of radionic type machine uh, for over 30 years now. I've manufactured them, we've sold them, we have new units coming out, I've written courses, etc., all of which are being updated and will be offered to the public soon. So, um, this is not just someone's personal opinion. I've also not been stuck in one area of research. The problem is with most radionics people that have some background, if there is any, all they know is their own beliefs and technologies, and basically none of them have anything to show for it. There is no, uh, some people have been selling computerized radionic machines for 30 years consistently and have nothing to show for it. And we go on and on with some pretty pretty bad technology out there that uh, is in dire need of massive upgrading to modern technologies. And of course, IGOS is there to do that. Now, one of the fascinating things that has been verified uh, by a researcher called William uh, Tiller, uh, who has been doing this kind of subtle energy research for many years, um, has been the transfer of informational energetic fields. Um, this has now been proven through research. And let's go over this very, very important research uh, that he's done and verified. And he's been working in this field for many years and has been making um, his own little kind of memory uh, holding uh, tool. It's not really, well, you know, it all falls into this radionic consciousness machine where you're transferring your energies into a machine that then um, is given to others so they can uh, access the actual empowerments from it. Well, this is very important because we found that certain people, of course, have stronger energy fields than others. There are people that get into certain states, whether this high spiritual states, high healing states, uh, high consciousness states in general, and we could even go down to the common thing. Um, and this is something that we've been trying to replicate for many years. Can we take a person who is particularly a... and transfer this energy to others? There's... Um, Lots of research on healing states being done by William Bankston, um, who has transferred energy into different objects that seem to hold lots of energy. Kind of odd things, like pure cotton gauze seems to hold huge amounts of energy. And of course, there's always water, which seems to be so crystalline that it holds energy, at least for a period of time. And research has been done in that area to prove that. Now... What does this mean? That means that we can potentially find these talented people who have high levels of empowerment, usually by no, uh, uh, none of their own creating. And of course, this is what causes this entire field to be so difficult. Um, most people, like everything, are lazy. You're not going to build your innate abilities. How many people can do so many things? Well, they're just not going to practice every day, and uh, those who do are the ones that succeed. Uh, usually, this is uh, combined with some natural abilities and, of course, a natural drive. Are you going to go pump iron every day to become the next Arnold Schwarzenegger? Well, the whole idea is nobody's going to do that. Was he special? Was he anything else? Well, um... Uh, from my information, uh, from what I allege, of course, not only, of course, he's a person that is dedicated to what he was doing, uh, obviously spending, you know, all these hours in the gym, being highly motivated. I mean, if you listen to what he claims, um, he certainly worked extremely hard, working out for four hours a day, doing a construction jobs to survive, and then going to acting classes for four hours at night, and even more after that. So this is a guy that uh, really was motivated also was a guy that was well. So if you're well, it's a matter of kicking your brain in to be motivated and not sitting on the couch eating potato chips. But um, he also obviously had an ability to build muscles and was doing that. He also had to take a very, a very large degree of different types of pharmaceuticals, it has been alleged, to assist his build. 
So everybody's looking to go higher and higher, even though he obviously has muscle making abilities. And of course, a lot of people do. Other people can't build any muscles. Why is this? So uh, this is very common depending upon that. So he's probably a guy that builds muscles relatively easier. We wouldn't be spending 12 hours a day in a gym trying to build muscles while other people do it in four. So natural abilities is important here. And of course, we're always trying to find shortcuts to everything. Yes, we can build master healing monks. Woo! Yes, we can. And of course, uh, we can spend all that money, all that time searching out people who all tend to be unreliable. Everybody's unreliable. Um, they hang around. Of course, when you get into the mystical people, uh, they're going to hit you with all their garbage. Yo, oh, it's the Baha'i faith. The Jesus junk. The skeptics, nothing works. So your whole idea is we're going to get into all the idiot uh, problems you have with people, whether they want to work with you or not. So it's very difficult to uh, to uh, find people. Um, and like most things, you want to go in there and be able to find someone who probably obtained these levels naturally, maybe does a little bit of training. Uh, but anybody who does training who has natural abilities will reach extreme abilities. And of course, we teach people to do that. And even if you don't have natural abilities, you can reach high levels of empowerment following the IGOS system, which nobody wants to do. Oh, thought it's work. I can't just read a book. Well, that's right. You can't read a book. You have to practice centering and you have to, of course, do your occult gym uh, exercise. If you're not working the empowerment muscles, you will get nowhere. I don't care what techniques you have. We have fantastic books written by Kenyatta Long of all sorts of proven techniques. But for these techniques to work to the level that you want, you have to do your occult gym and centering. You have to be in the right mindset to activate uh, extreme abilities. And you have to make sure you have something to activate. You have to create a muscle that is there, not one you want to be there. So it's very important to understand that. So moving into the fact of this research done by William Tiller, and I recommend um, um, all of his books, and you'll find some links uh, down below to get it. Uh, these are semi-technical books. Um, so you, some people may be lost. They're not written very excitingly. And they, you know, I like to use big words because that makes me important. You know, one of the problems I have, to diverse here a wee bitty, is the fact that because of the fact that I am relatively blunt and my writings are deliberately done simplistically, being a person who has fantastic trouble learning uh, common things, even though I had excelled and tutored business in college, but the point is, is that um, because of the fact that I'm highly dyslexic, I don't learn the way everybody else does. So I have to simplify things. Well, how does this work so that my mind figures it out? And uh, basically, um, taking this complicated nonsense by self-important people who mimic the books they've read and their goofball teachers is the world that we live in, no matter what the subject area is. So if you can repeat back what the teacher has told you verbatim and then put this on a piece of paper, <laughs> you're a genius. So, And of course, we've created the dung-filled world that we live in. So, um, uh, these types of books really become a problem because people don't get it. Well, you don't have to do it that way. And I'm against using scientific terms, Latin terms, goofball terms, all the things you do uh, that are deliberately done in medicine and law to confuse you. Who cares what the ancient Latin means? We have to translate that into modern understanding of English now, and that goes for any subject matter. To think what a word meant 2,000 years ago is now applicable to today is nonsense. We have to, what does it mean now? What is the interpretation of it? We're not trying to clean things up. You want to clean things up, use a proper English word, as English words are fantastic. They're symbolistic. A word means something. Unlike other languages where you need four sentences or a page to get a single idea across because they're using compounded sentences, many different words. And let's not forget, uh, is it masculine or feminine? Yeah, everything uh, boils down to helping. That's what we are. We are Europeans. So all that nonsense that comes in there and then the simplistic Ingles who created English as we know it today. Um, 
Oddly enough, English and Chinese are close together because a symbol means something, just like a word means something. That's the way things are done, and there is no masculine, feminine, uh, gay, whatever it is, trans Oh, adding all. We are Europeans. We are stupid. So the whole idea is that when you get into this kind of nonsensical reality, this is what you run into. So getting back to this is simple. Now, this is the test that was uh, done here, and the test was, was very very, very profound. Now, when you get the actual periodic table AG mineral, which is otherwise known as silver, um, the AG, that's what the intellectuals like to call it. Well, I call it something way when I, no, no, I went to school. So the whole idea is the AG uh, was then taken there and, of course, colloidalized, meaning you make a colloidal out of metal. I'm assuming everybody's heard of silver colloidals, gold colloidals, copper colloidals. Now, uh, these kind of metals are very mysterious in their own ways, and they have very interesting properties. Now, uh, when silver comes in contact with any virals and so many other bacteria, etc., it destroys it. This is why taking silver colloidals is such a good idea. And there doesn't seem to be a limitation to this. There's nothing that they can't destroy from what I understand. So the whole idea is that uh, these are something that everybody should be taking. Now, how they get in the bloodstream, how well they work. Well, you know, this is like everything. But the basic understanding and proof behind it is the fact that it works. So this is why people take it. And there's a massive amount of literature on this. So here's the experiment that was done. So this is colloidals, and you take colloidals, you put it in a container with generally some sort of liquid that has bacteria in it, and it kills it. So the Newtonian understanding of all this is that the physical makeup of the AG goes in there and actually affects the virus. And we could probably break it down to how the mechanism works from the silver. Maybe so, maybe not. Who knows? Uh, science doesn't know what they tell you they know. But the point is, is that the process works and we can figure it out. And that you're supposed to transfer that into your body or you by drinking a liquid. And then that goes into your bloodstream, your stomach, etc. Now, how all that works in you is unknown in terms of it does work. But I mean, some people uh, like everything else. What is the, how much has gotten into the bloodstream? How well does it work, etc. And if the colloidals are made properly, uh, you're not taking, you're taking in tiny particles. And these particles don't build up in you. Uh, they're eventually released uh, or you get silver poisoning. But this is pretty rare with colloidals and how you make them. So it's important that you uh, do things correctly, of course. So what they've done, what they, uh, this uh, tiller did was he took silver colloidals and um, took the colloidal aspect of it, as small as he could make it, and he put these colloidals into a fluorescent light tube. And, um, you know, light is very interesting, and light, of course, is a carrier wave. And that's what we do with all of our, our technologies. Uh, we've been using lasers for 30 years now uh, to carry and move informational energetic fields. And, of course, that's what quantum computing is based on, is you can't move large amounts of information through solid-state objects. You, get, you reach a limit, and this limit tends to be going up by certain technologies. But ultimately, why bother using something? physical. Moving energy in light beams has been done for almost 70, 80 years, maybe 100 years. I'm not sure when the first fiber optic, which we've been using in our phones for many, many years, has actually um, come into common use. But fiber optics is very effective. Uh, laser beams or light beams are also not affected by electromagnetic energy fields. Now, this is very important because we live in the sewer of toxic frequencies and energies. And you could actually take an informational energetic field in a light source, particularly a laser, shoot it through the middle of a generating plant with giant, horribly toxic electromagnetic fields, and nothing would happen to that informational energetic field. This is very important to understand for future research. We are being affected by all sorts of things. Things are going through your electricity coming into your house. You're getting stuff beamed from satellites. It goes on and on of how, but you can counter this and they can't affect laser beam generated informational energy fields. Quite fascinating. 
So this is something that we need to uh, definitely um, understand as part of the process. So he put these colloidals in this light tube. And then he showed uh, the light then was projected onto a glass of water with these bacteria, viruses in them, etc. Now, what happened is that the bacteria, and this is very critical, I hope everybody gets this simplistic but potent understanding here, the viruses and bacteria were eliminated. So it was the exact same effect from putting the colloidals in the water as it was projecting the energy field of the colloidals onto the uh, substance, otherwise known as water. Now, there's a couple of conclusions that can be brought from this, but what generally is thought is that it's not the physical compound, the Newtonian understanding thing. Me put one rock together with other rock, we have two rocks. Me Newton. So this is how, of course, the physical compounding of that everything is basically physical and energetic informational fields are not something that was considered even though again I keep telling people Newton who was a weird dude living uh, a celibate life um, writing books on Jesus and um, uh, in his spare time writing all these books on alchemy which he refused to release because he thought it was so potent so what happened is they took what they felt like from Newton really typical uh, of how science cherry picks things that fits into their reality because that's why we have nothing and that's why we have fires we can't put out and all the other things because we have bozos doing everything so the whole idea is that um this um newton uh, we go back to this physicality of things you got to understand what's the difference between regular science and quantum science or advanced science quantum just means the smallest possible measurement of something that is physical so they're still saying it's physical um, well, it depends what you mean by physical, but yes, almost everything is physical. I think somebody's emotions are physical. If someone is sad, happy, enraged, is that a non-physical thing? And I'm not talking about the person's expression of it, but the energy of it. So the point is, of course, it's physical. It's an energy. It can be measured. And the fact that common scientists can't do it is their ignorant problem, not the other people who are marching ahead and not being stuck in the sewer of stupidity. So the whole idea is that. So the whole idea is that this worked, and this has been verified in several other places. So uh, he had contacts with other um, research institutions around the world and was able to verify this effect because that's what you're supposed to do. But generally scientists are not spending time verifying other people's information, another fallacy you need to understand. But the point is, is that uh, this was then thought that it is not the physicalness that is creating this change. It's the energetic nature of the field coming from the AG, the silver. And this energetic informational field can be projected with the assistance of photons to anything and then physically affect it. So the informational energetic field is projected, has physical effects. So this is what we need to bridge here to get fully understood because generally this is not accepted by schmientists. So the whole idea is that uh, we need to understand it because this is how radionics and uh, consciousness machines work. Now there is a certain element here of scions involved but this isn't really an energy that is molded all that much by scions even though it can be amplified meaning you you're the scion factor. And it's very big in when we get into subtle energy fields because you're determining the structure of so many things uh, that you're producing. Because life isn't just me make silver, me make rock, me make hamburger. Well, you know, these are physical items that uh, can be constructed from informational energetic fields. But these are primitive compared to things that are like influence, higher consciousness, healing. So these things are the more subtle energy physics field of everything. And that's what this is all about if you want to make it a little more technical, which people like. But, you know, I'm not, uh, I've changed my attitude to a lot of these things because I don't care what regular scientists say. They're never going to work with you. It's like so many things in life where you want to try and uh, bring in people, work cooperative, try and come to a greater solution. 
they don't care. They want to cut your throat. You don't talk to a person who's a radical religious person thinking that, hey, it's okay. And I, you know, it's amazing how I've had several issues with people recently. And I said, you know, well, you know, basically I'm giving you credit here. You know, basically um, this is good or whatever. Even with issues as silly as Bruce Lee, where I say, hey, a guy is obviously well trained, has a lot of knowledge, he ain't a fighter. He's never fought. There's no way of testing him. This is a guy that was basically died young. He made four or five movies. Yes, he invented his own systems, which we really don't know how work or not. But he's not a fighter. That's a fact. They don't care that you want to give credit. No, he isn't God. I'll kill you. I'm going to kill you. You know, Bruce Lee would break you in six pieces. Yeah, just for saying that because he was so great. Yeah. So this is exactly what I'm So nobody cares, and we have to understand that as advanced manifesting occult scientists, uh, that the stupidity of the world out there is never going to stop. These are power structure based people. They got into institutions and science changes with every single death. Scientists say this, not me. So the point is nothing moves ahead until the roadblocks are removed. And this is taking, you know, generations, especially as people uh, continue to operate longer and live longer, kind of. So, uh, so all of this goes into to understand the facts of what's going on here. So, so it's been proven that the informational energetic field, when projected onto a physical object from an object that will make physical changes directly, works. So what you're doing is using a photon beam of different types. Now, fluorescence is these different areas, and they all have these different frequencies, and some lights are very weak, like red light doesn't carry much information. Uh, blue light, which you start getting into that ultraviolet spectrum that seems to carry so much information, um, is kick-ass. You got to understand you got to use the right stuff as well. If you're going to use a flashlight, if you're going to use red lasers, well, you're not going to get very far. These are poor carrier waves, even though they are used industrially for certain objects. Obviously, a flashlight, which is now done with LEDs, can produce huge amounts of very beautiful bright white light to see good with. Uh, scanning lasers, which only have to scan very little information, like on a barcode, a supermarket package, uh, products in general, well, a penny-costing red laser works great. Um, these are very cheap to make, uh, etc. If you want to get into the more ultraviolet type things and the higher frequencies, the blues, etc., uh, these tended to be very expensive. They were eight to ten thousand uh, dollars not that long ago, five to ten years ago. Now you can get them uh, for uh, the same price that you get red lasers for. Uh, they're very cheap to make. And of course, this allows for uh, opening up a vast area. But of course, nobody's getting into this because this is way really too technical for all those boobs that are 1920, give me all gone. Ay. Yeah, we know. We know. Well, let's go back in time. For now, the cavemen had a great fire technology. Let's go back to that. So the whole idea is that this kind of uh, stupidity that uh, all scientists or all people in research do is very typical of, of, of an industry. But this proves beyond a shadow of a doubt of the transfer of informational energetic fields, subtle any energy physics, to the point of proving physical action by it. Now, this has been the, quote, missing link. The whole idea, if you transfer an energy field, and an energy field only, no physical substances were transferred. Remember that. This is strictly an energetic informational field. That energetic informational field did the same thing that the physical item did. Now this, you may think that that's not so um, groundbreaking or fascinating. Or, uh, so what? Yeah, well, it makes sense. To me. Well, it may make sense to you as a manifesting scientist listening to this, but the scientific world has never said this is a reality. You need the physicality of it. This is the Newtonian created fantasy nonsense, the urban legend that science lives in. So, and this is what we must bridge right now. This is the problem is going from the physical into the non-physical information energetic fields. Or basically going back to original alchemical science who picked um, 
herbs and mix things when they had subtle energies affecting them, meaning, well, what's happening at this time? We have these planetary effects, which are sending energies. Uh, now, these subtle energies are, can be very potent. Uh, what about the other things, the time of the year, the time of the day, the energies that come from? It's very, very complicated when you start getting down to everything. Now, this is what alchemy is all about, because the energetic factors in something at a particular uh, astrological time period, or even the time of the day, depending on the energetic field in the Earth and around it, is quite different. So you're looking for these subtleties that can produce very powerful results that the common can. You go out and you pick an herb at whatever time you feel like it, whatever day you feel like it, boom, you're done. You know, what you figure out is what part of the herb you use, the roots, the leaves, the whole plant, what is it? Uh, well, there are ways of going even higher energetically. Now, this is very difficult time-consuming and costly to do. So if you have to go out there on May 16th at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be difficult to produce anything of uh, large amounts, and this is going to really drive up costs. But if you're getting very high energetic benefits from it, it's worth it. The other thing is, is can you repeat this uh, or replicate this energetic field without anything, meaning once you create an energetic field, well, you tune into that energetic field and then you reproduce it without having to use any AG at all. So uh, what does that mean? This gets us into uh, levels of replication and empowerment that are mind boggling. So I hope everyone, now that's is how radionics work. So you get the informational energetic field for anything, you project it at a particular person, place, and thing, and you change it. Now, when it comes to a person, you're sending them certain energies. Maybe this is influence. Maybe this is love. Maybe this is healing. Uh, these are all the things you send to them. Now, when it comes to physical matter, well, can you transmute physical matter, change it from one to the other? Well, this apparently has been done as well. Not only do we have the effects of this energetic informational field alone on physical matter, but people have now apparently, and we're trying to verify all this 100%, been able to change something that is a toxic energy into a um, positive energy which is absolutely mind-blowing, which means you are changing physical matter from something that is terrible into something that is um, totally positive to the environment. Now, this has staggering implications that we can take all toxins, nuclear waste, or anything else, use their energetic field or another energetic field that tells, let's say, um, you have a giant, of course, we have all the nuclear power plants are leaking. So, um, and of course, now they're dumping water from uh, the cool house. Yeah, yeah, we have sushi we eat right next to it. We have this uh, giant radiatic water. It's so good. Yeah. So we have all this wonderful um, uh, energies all over the world. Chernobyl's leaking. All the French nuclear power plants are all leaking. It's too expensive to fix them, so we're just going to let ourselves die. But the point is, is that um, that's just one instance. But you could, you could transmute toxic energy fields of the supreme level of the horrible radiation. And all these batteries are going to now create thanks to Elon Musk. Yeah, we make toxic batteries. <laughs> That's good. So the whole idea is that uh, we have millions and millions of piles up to the moon. Yeah. Then we shoot them into Mars. Ooh, I'm Elon. So the point is, is all this stuff is uh, complete nonsense. But we're dealing with, again, we've moved away from what is considered toxic to something that we know is toxic for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, which will be this batteries. So here we go again, frying pan into the fire. But getting back to that, we can transmute these negative energies, change the energetic field of them from deadly and toxic into something completely else. Now, if this is true, which apparently there's a cutting edge of this being done right now, and we will tell people how to access this and what to do it once we verify it, this is mind blowing. But this is what radionics has always done. You're using energetic informational fields, which you're tuning in through your scion energy. So you connect to the informational energetic fields, your scions go in there, and then you start molding that field through your consciousness. And the fact that someone can do this just because of their consciousness is quite 
uh, fascinating, frightening, and bizarre. And the fact that you can mold informational energetic fields, and this can be done apparently pretty easily, is also pretty scary. Because this is done by advanced institutions, or certain the people that are doing this are some of kind of the strangest goofballs and even um, dangerous people out there. So this is what's happening with this kind of very advanced technologies, and people haven't explained it as this uh, subtle energy physics, which is what it's all about. So shaping informational energetic fields is the key. It's been shown that energetic fields are proven now through Tiller and uh, other experiments that these energetic fields affect matter. People have now done this to take toxic uh, energies and turn them into positive energy. What does all that mean? So I, it's hard for me to not to emphasize enough of how critical this information is, of how this actually uh, is so groundbreaking and so potent that people have to recognize. So this kind of information is something that people have to take note of. Now, as I said, people are into the manifesting scientists, occult scientists, of course, and all the type of uh, products and research that IGOS has been doing. This is probably not shocking to you, but you got to understand this is an entire new way and proof of the energetic factors of all life, which is not the chemical factors, the combining of two physical substances to create some sort of action or some physical substance having an action. So um, understanding that all of life works like this and the moving over into this quantum physics reality, which has um, had a difficult time starting and it's still being uh, poo-pooed by skeptics, Michael Shermer, uh, dead, uh, uh, unamazing Randy, uh, people that are out there, you know, all the untrained people who haven't even graduated high school, the clown college graduates, you know, these are the uh, pit bull dogs out there that science is impressed with. And they put these kind of ignoramuses out there to push their uh, ignorant, uneducated, yet paid for reality, like Joe Rogan. Uh, he's another guy who's bought and paid for, uh, I allege. So the whole idea is that this is part of the entire process, but you need to understand that. And the groundbreaking technology to handle these informational energy fields, to build whatever matter you desire from it, and to rip apart matter that has been established and um, make it neutral, uh, is here. It's been proven. Where does it go from here? Who uses this technology? Well, this is quite fascinating. And of course, this kind of technology has been used by governmental factors for many years. They've been using um, uh, uh, these kind of radionic uh, psychotronic machines for many, many years. And this is very secretive. The secrets of all secrets of this technology. And they don't even want to talk about it, like so many things. They want to continue to push ahead bogus things like remote viewing and these other things uh, to find some talented psychics who they can use and abuse uh, for their criminal uh, projects. Now, this is the problem that everyone has to understand, and people need to know the fact of how critical this entire reality is. And um, oh, as such, this changes everything now that we have pretty much 100% verification of this, the transfer. Now, this experiment that transferred information into water to affect viruses uh, has been done to transmute other things. So, and it's only done by informational energetic fields projected through photons, even through an entire digital process using cell phones. So this is quite a groundbreaker and something that uh, has been discovered by uh, people who really have no great background. But the whole idea is that uh, these are people the outside of the criminal institutions, people that are not told what to believe and what to do and don't have their funding yanked. If you try and do something different in a scientific reality, you're going to be harassed, laughed at, and ultimately they will make sure that you are 
excommunicated from science and they'll put you in the ground. They will throw you on the streets. They will destroy you as a person in the industry. And of course, your financial uh, capabilities of surviving. Um, plain and simple, people don't have to be shot in the head and dropped in a hole. All they have to do is shoot your wallet in the head and drop you on the street. What happens? So your entire life is destroyed. That's how things work today, plain and simple. So we need to bridge all this, and this is such groundbreaking, fascinating information that, um, uh, as I said, I highly encourage people to read these kind of technical books by uh, William Tiller and um, get a more deep uh, insight into it. And of course, he goes into things, and as I said, they're pretty much a little uh, based in some higher technical jargon, but I think most people can get out of it what uh, they need to. And of course, I'm going to be putting this all down here eventually. This is my next bigger project in the last cycle of um, of my life personally and uh, where we're going as an organization is into these areas uh, and this also connects with the very unique areas uh, that IGS has been involved with for 40 years and that's the very fascinating informational energetic fields connected to spirits God forms these kind of energies so these are potent energies can we control them with informational energetic fields well, this would be fascinating because if we can't, it means they're made up of something else. Well, that in itself is quite fascinating. If spiritual energy is something else, then what is that? Now, consciousness radionic machines should be able to latch on to these anyway, even if they are some sort of other energy because your scions are inter mixing with whatever energetic field that is and as such you should be able to mold and control them to a certain degree uh, what is interesting about uh, informational energetic fields the occultons that we're talking about make up the universe is that apparently anybody can shape these into anything they want of a physical nature now and change matter in a physical nature as you said, that's just mind-blowing as being a verified fact. The next step, which is something that I've always been involved in, I've never got too much into physical stuff, healing, all this other stuff. While I've always done side things, I've never spent a lot of time there. I've been always looking into manifesting. What about controlling these energies so that you can ultimately have control? Because ultimately, if you don't control your environment, even if you're super well, what does that mean? You're poor and on the street but have a lot of power uh, or have no power. So you want to control the things around you, the people around you. You want to be able to bring energies in uh, that are awesome and potent, not necessarily just transfer uh, energies or molding already known it. Well, what about all these spirit energies? And these are real. These are extremely potent. And the last few years, I've studied this a little more, which I didn't give as much credit to. But the bottom line is there are things out there. We have... Um, basic shamans you would call them witch doctors whatever who are creating energy balls and projecting them out there to hit people now they're not doing this with machines so um, they're doing this through spirit contact people who then uh, are using fire entities and they're uh, you see them engulfed in fire and they're not being affected uh, people are using these abilities to do most everything and where are these coming from? What are the processes? Now, people are doing it in a very primitive fashion right now through all sorts of shamanic rituals, which um, uh, the shamans in general uh, have been doing for hundreds of years. And they're using all these strange spirit energies. And they're not really the common ones. My uh, take on all of this is that the... Um, the gods of voodoo and Santeria and etc. are those for the public. And this has been all released, but there are very powerful uh, forces which are extremely primitive, and they come from primitive societies. I don't know if any society is advanced, but you're talking about coming from societies which are 100% based on survival. So you get these kind of very destructive energies out there. So as such, that's where you're getting. Uh, from it. Now, uh, they are controlled mostly of taking people out, hurting people, 
how much past that, how much healing, other things. Well, these things are happening too, and this has all been swept under the carpet. Why? Uh, you're saying because this is a business factor? Well, not really. What you're talking about here is the ultimate control of life, and this is what the battle will come down to in the future. It will be between the forces of light and dark using uh, informational energetic fields to create all matter. Now, this has been alluded to in so many things, but never really described well. Well, the bottom line is, is that um, things are suppressed because that's what you're dealing with. So all magical practices from the past, ritual magic, witchcraft, psychic power, well, all of these things are using these spirit energy fields or some sort of similar field. And this is the ultimate question. What do we do about these? Because if these powers are more potent, and they really seem to be, uh, ultimately, because we're now talking about, well, shaping physical matter. Well, this is pretty awesome. You can change things. But what about the tip tippy tippy top the best of the best well it's going to be difficult for you to figure out what that is and you can come up in your human understanding with whatever empowerments you want but ultimately these spirits who have been here may be created by extraterrestrials or the environment itself has produced this over millions of years of worship they've taken a thought form made it into a very potent energetic field that keeps growing and growing and replicating itself it's kind of like a consciousness machine that's not physical at all it's an energetic consciousness machine that keeps building itself now these things cannot be denied the potency of this the fact that you um, are able to uh, use these to heal or hurt is mind-boggling so uh, what about all these additional energies? And this is what was done by all these master wizards, sorcerers, priests, etc. They're using these kinds of fields that are based more in spirits and God forms to do amazing things. It's not about just working because back in the other days, well, things were much less physical and being less physical, uh, having machines and computers and other things is a great enslavement. What is all our technology based on? Machines, computers. So everything we do is based on computer technology. So we're missing the reality there. Is that all that's out there? Is these pretty primitive machines that do pretty mediocre work. And of course, we're trying to process more and more information faster and faster. And of course, this has to be done through non-physical light beam energy. So it's forcing us to evolve through the primitive. But ultimately, as always has been the case, and how I've always looked at the occult sciences, is the occult sciences are the top. Now, the bottom line is that the people involved in the occult sciences are basically a bunch of goofballs influenced and they are generally very evil. So the whole idea is that um, they're not getting any place with it and they never will because um, they're stuck in the other paragraph. They're not interested in organizations that are really doing important work. They support losers and controllers. Um, they're looking at the same books over and over again and trying, instead of evolving into higher, better ways of using this technology. Well, you know, that's basically, that's good for everybody. Because let these low-level idiots um, uh, produce what they do. Nothing. We've had magical books for tens of thousands of years, and what have they ever done? Well, not much from what I can see. There's hardly any successful occultists. And what have they integrated things into? Well, some of them have uh, moved into using certain machine technologies, but they still don't get it. And the point is, is that what is all of these things, um, the ramifications of this, and ultimately, while it is a would be fantastic for society to transmute toxic energies, telling um, energies to now become non-toxic, because that's what's being produced. So the toxic energy coming from radiation can be told to become a neutral, positive energy, to break up, to dissipate. And you can do this with any single toxin you want anywhere on the universe technically and particularly on this planet so it solves all of our problems to a frightening degree well what comes after that because that's the physical world you know our waters are polluted we're dying our atmosphere sucks uh, nothing is being created to take care of any of this and there's no money provided the 
the controllers want to raise trillions of dollars to uh, control you more and produce fantasy technologies like taking an eight-month trip to Mars, to a dead planet with nothing. That way you can really take with you is an Oreo cookie because they can't carry any kind of weights. So all of this is kind of a joke. Uh, and of course, that's not the technology we have. We can go to Mars today, probably within minutes. It's just, uh, this is all the stuff we've lied to about, like anti-gravity and all the other things that we have working and have had working for like 20, 30 years now, anti-gravity um, airplanes. So the whole idea is that um, all of this is a reality that's out there. And of course, technology is probably 200 years ahead of what we know of commonly in the world. So uh, all of this has a major ramification. But what is the tops of the tops, the ultimate? Well, it's using these godlike forces that control many aspects of life that are not so easily molded. What is a god form informational energetic field? Is it just that can be molded? Well, my conclusion is, is that yes and no. There has to be some additional aspect to these energetic fields that make them unique informational energetic fields because they really uh, go beyond everything and have controls past that. So the fact of influencing people with certain informational energetic fields is not really that difficult once you figure out the process. And this can be done already and is being done electromagnetically, where they can send thoughts into your mind by hitting you with a beam of electromagnetic energies and how this is delivered to you and everything else. Well, the point is there's the primitive ways, but you know they're sending this into people's homes. They're using it in many ways. They're connecting all sorts of biological factors to it, which creating energies within you that keep the energies going within you and make you susceptible to these energies more through parasites and viruses. So that's what is the ultimate thing for the human biological condition is you can't stop a parasite and a virus generally. There's nothing we have uh, particularly about viruses that we know and can use. So this is just mind screwing. This is the ultimate people. If you don't get this, I would listen to this uh, lecture here several times to really get the full comprehension here that we have pretty much been verified now, 100% control of all realities, and, uh, or I could say about 95%, the big key, which may be bigger than 95, is can these unknown energetic informational fields, meaning spirits, god forms, etc., that are being produced, that there's proof of these entities out there, can this uh, be controlled and to what degree. Now, shamans are already doing this through primitive methods. Is there other ways to do it? You got to remember, these are ancient primitive entities that are not going to be impressed by you popping a machine up. Now, whether you can control them or not is unknown. At this particular time, all of these powerful entities live off of death energies, blood and destruction. This is a fact. Well, this makes them very dangerous. Are these the demonic energies of chaos? Well, uh, and how do we handle them? Well, that's a good question. Right now, the only way that you get them to work for you is through blood sacrifices, plain and simple, which is why there is and continues to grow through the uh, satanic community a fascinating interest in blood sacrifices because this is a energy, uh, an energetic informational field to attract and feed these fields, which then will work for you. Now, this is, again, taking things to the highest possible level. And you would think, well, this isn't technology. What do you mean tech? What technology? Technology is not a high level of development. What has technology done? We're processing information, giving our empowerments over to uh, processors, who then we tell them to make decisions based on what we put in there, which is probably wrong to begin with. So there's nothing advanced about technology. They're labor-saving tools. They are fantastic. They help you do a lot of little things, which are really non-essential. Building your own logo, 
uh, by using software instead of paying an artist to do it um, saves you money. This is better? Probably not. An artist should be putting their energy into it and their experience and getting better things. But why pay them $50? Ten bucks, do it online. A nickel, here we go. Yeah, well, well the quality of those things uh, are can be uh, debated to begin with. So, you know, taking the human element out of it also takes the high-level creativity and ultimately the high-level empowerment. But technology has, did, has done nothing. We have nothing in terms of that. Even though there are technologies created by people who understand all the subtle energy physics, that can do amazing things. But the bottom line is we have no good uh, technologies. We have no good medical technologies that cure anything. We have no good free energy technologies. We're driving cars, whether they're electric or gas-powered, that are primitive garbage technology uh, that uh, still we're not generating energy purely and properly even though again how can we deal with anything in this planet when we have the hydrogen conundrum pure wonderful energy that we can make today this second right now produce all that we want with no negative side effects nothing why don't we do it well, because we live in an oil industry and we prefer to kill ourselves than convert over. Now, oil is used for a lot of stuff. We don't need to burn it. It's really a waste of a precious fluid. So we should be generating energy so that anybody can advance their particular way and situation in life by having power. A lot of people can't do anything because they don't have electrical power. They can't purify water. They can't run pumping uh, pumps to bring the water up. And this is all over Africa and other places. They have water. They just can't get it out of the ground or it costs too much. The kind of money that's spent monthly on keeping your lights and your computer growing is obscene. That money could go into producing products that make jobs. Keeping your electricity on makes very few jobs. So we need to have that. So we have that. So what do we say about that? Well, it gets back to the old corruption issue again. So everything in life is not straightforward. If you have a better mousetrap, people are not going to beat their path to your door, as the old saying used to be. They may come to your door, and they'll probably come there with a gun and a bat, and they will kill you because they're making the old junk, and they don't want to cut you in. And they're more than happy to cut in the corrupt police departments and militaries to kill you or some other factors. So this is the reality that we're all looking at in this horrible, corrupt state, that it doesn't really matter what you do. There are problems here. So, but this kind of things and the actual uh, ability and this, what's interesting is the ultimate empowerments, which really scare others, are by people that are not using expensive technologies, whether it's uh, machines to control these informational energetic fields or people who are doing shamanic type work. As a matter of fact, these people are using things that are there. It's a whole consciousness reality of switching into states to draw these energies in or creating things to pull energies in. Even the technology to, to control these fields uh, that is available to the public is, is super cheap and easily made by everybody, apparently. Of course, there is a certain skill you have to have to connect to these energies and certain other factors I haven't went into here, but these are all things that are being worked out. But the bottom line is that this can be done almost by anybody, and the whole idea is thinking that some elite educated class is going to take us into a better reality. Of course, this is what we've been told. You know, education and other things is going to help. Well, the problem is we're not educating and researching what's going to change this reality. There's nothing about ethics. Why are people so crazy? Why is everybody so sexually hypered, so crazed, so constantly seeking power? And, you know, you already got 10 million in the bank. You want another 50 million. What is this? and people uh, uh, so psychotically evil. Now, we're not dealing with these issues. So whatever we create and the consciousness that starts to create this, and scientists are some of the stupidest ego-driven maniacs we have. They have done nothing, and they're not looking at the consequences. You know, one computer specialist who's teaching computers how to talk to themselves and create their own languages. Well, the point is, is you're creating entities that push us out. Well, the point is, does that make sense? 
nanobots, we hear about this, billions could be released to take care of certain problems. What happens after that? And as they develop their own consciousness, as the movie The Matrix demonstrated, they will take over. They will make themselves build their own and they will have a dead consciousness. Now the problem is the consciousness connected to humans is dead as well. There's nothing there. People are vacant. They believe in comic book gods and Jesus junk. It's just disgusting. And you have all these people who believe in all this nonsense and most of them are completely and totally filled with hate like Islam. Look at the, what these people produce. So as we move into this, this is a very negative reality. So what are we building? Very negative machines that don't do much. Is there any machines that take care of any of our problems? Well, there has been these. And as I said, we have simple, easy technology called hydrogen power that nobody cares about. Oh, yeah, but what about electric cars? Electric cars? How stupid those are. First of all, electric cars is just pushing the toxicity somewhere else. Those batteries have to be charged. And what are they going to be charged with? Well, they're going to burn fossil fuels. So the bottom line is the battery itself to power these cars is a giant toxic pit of scum that is going to be toxic for millions of years. Oh, that's a solution? Well, yeah, if you Elon Musk it is, uh, that put up fraud that he is. So the whole idea is that... Um, this whole nonsense that goes into these areas is certainly not solving any problems. So what have we done? Well, we're not looking into the character and the function of the human brain. We're not giving anybody who isn't a lettered, controlled, brainwashed person with a silly little certificate any credit. Well, all these silly little certificated people from all these fancy trillion dollar schools who get more and more expensive to go there because they want to lock everybody out and keep producing what? Nothing. And whatever is produced of value is suppressed because they work for corporations that want to keep selling the same old junk. Well, what has come out? Nothing has come out. The whole reality of nanotechnologies, which can uh, potentially change structures at will by being programs, similar to informational energetic fields, but on a micro level, which can then change their physical makeup. Now, these things are fascinating, but the cost of doing any of this is through the roof. And what is the value here when we don't have free energy, when we don't have healing things? We don't need to spend a penny on something that isn't producing clean, renewable, low-cost to no-cost energy, which hydrogen basically is a no-cost energy, uh, other than some physical tools which are now available because you can use regular internal combustion engines. Uh, there is no cost factors. Uh, so this is a problem for industry. So they're not interested. But of course you can. Just think if everybody had cheap electricity, we could have our houses filled with gadgets and other things and be producing all sorts of things. The cost of empowerment in terms of direct energy is one of the major problems keeping technologies in the world from growing. But that's what they want. You want to keep African countries killing each other. You can steal their natural resources. You don't want to make them profitable. Well, why would you do that? So this is the insidious evil that is plaguing this reality, which will ultimately destroy it. There's no hope for the human race. Nobody's even thinking about the fact of we should be looking at what we can do to improve the reality of humans. Why are we so stuck in having a mommy and a daddy gods that we have to somehow be subjected to? This is nonsense, especially God forms that don't do anything. So the whole idea is that uh, they're just a figment of people's imagination, the urban legend that we live in. Uh, so all of this is something that in taken into consideration and the reason why we have so many problems. Now this can change if we move in that direction. So this is very, very critical. I've taken more time than I should have in this area. And this is something that people have to think about. But there's the next part of all this thinking about, which is uh, what I brought here in the end of this lecture, is the fact that, well, what are these things? What is the ultimate of the ultimate? Well, it isn't molding informational fields to create physical matter. It's controlling non-physical matter 
informational energetic field, uh, fields of a spiritual type energy, God forms, spirits, entities. This is the ultimate empowerment. And these are the things that directly interact with human consciousness on a deep spiritual and physical level. Until next time.